Mmm, my favorite, s'mores Pop-Tart. So now that I've eaten this, what happens next? Hi, and welcome to Human Digestion. So today we're going to be talking about part one of the digestive system. We're going to start with the mouth and end with our stomach. So first of all, we need to talk about nutrition. This is the process by which organisms obtain and utilize their food. There are two parts to nutrition. There is ingestion, when you're taking food into your stomach, like when I took a bite of my Pop-Tart, and then there is digestion. This is the breakdown of food, either chemically or mechanically, in order to utilize nutrients. There are different types of nutrients. We have micronutrients, which are really, really small, and those include our vitamins, minerals, and water. So vitamins like vitamin C that you might take whenever you start feeling a little bit sick, iron, and then like I said, water. We also have macronutrients. Those are our big biomolecules that we talked about in class. Those include carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. So ingestion. It starts in the mouth. We have mechanical digestion being taken by the teeth. Our teeth are biting down and chewing up our food, and that breaks our food apart. Chemical digestion also occurs in the mouth. This occurs through our saliva. So if I go to a restaurant and sit down, and all of a sudden I start smelling all of this really, really good stuff, garlic and onions, your mouth starts to water. That's your saliva and your mouth is preparing itself to digest food. Your saliva contains an enzyme called amylase. This is an enzyme that digests starches. And if you remember, a lot of the foods that we eat contain starch. Our mouth also contains something that's called mucin. This is a slippery protein, or mucus, and it provides a soft lining of the digestive system. It also helps to lubricate our food to make it easier when we have to swallow it. We have buffers in our mouth. These neutralize the acids that we take in and it helps to prevent tooth decay. So mechanical versus chemical digestion. I wanted to give you guys a couple of examples so you understand the difference. When I was chewing up that Pop-Tart, that was an example of mechanical digestion. It's just a physical digestion. Nothing is happening at a molecular level. Whenever my saliva was actually breaking down that Pop-Tart into glucose, a chemical reaction was occurring because I was breaking those bonds. If you think about it, that amylase is breaking down starch. So if we have a molecule of starch and we see that it's long, whenever it gets broken down into monomers, it comes apart. So that's what happens when we hydrolyze our food. We're splitting it with water. So that enzyme hydrolyzes it. Same thing as hydrolysis, splitting with water. So hydrolysis, splitting with water. And that's what's occurring with the enzyme amylase. Whenever my tongue was moving those pieces of Pop-Tart around and helping to break it apart, that's another example of mechanical digestion. Nothing chemical is taking place. <clears throat> Pepsin is an enzyme in your stomach that's responsible for breaking down proteins into amino acids. And if you remember, amino acids are the components that proteins are made out of, or monomers. That's an example of chemical digestion. So again, digestion begins in our mouth. It can be either chemical or mechanical. Whenever we start to chew our food, that's called mastication. So you never want to masticate with your mouth open because that's just gross. Once we start chewing our food or masticating it, we form a lump. This lump is called a bolus. 
and it is formed with saliva and the tongue. So how do we swallow our food without choking? We have this thing called an epiglottis. The epiglottis is a flap of cartilage, as you can see right here. And this flap of cartilage closes the trachea, which is our windpipe. So if you push right here on your neck, that is your trachea, and it does not feel good if you push on it. That is your windpipe. You don't want food going down your windpipe. That does happen every once in a while, though. So if you've ever drank something or you're eating something and you inhale as you're eating, <coughs> you start choking. <clears throat> and we call that inhaling your food. And it is not a pleasant experience. I'm sure everybody's had that happen to them at one point or another. So once the food enters the mouth and we swallow it, it starts to travel down the esophagus. So right here you can see our esophagus. <clears throat> and the food is passing through the esophagus. A process called peristalsis is responsible for helping to squeeze that food down and keep it down. Peristalsis is involuntary muscle contractions that help to move the food along. So we take food in. As soon as we swallow it, that sphincter contracts and closes because we don't want that food coming back up. We have digestive glands, and these are groups of specialized secretory cells. Secretory means that they're going to secrete something, like we secrete saliva in our mouths. It's found in the lining of the alimentary canal or accessory organs. So peristalsis, again, is this series of involuntary wave-like muscle contractions which move food along the digestive tract. So once we've swallowed our food, and it's traveled down our esophagus, it enters the stomach. This is where food is temporarily stored. Gastric juices are secreted, and the stomach has layers of muscle that line the inside of it. Food is both mechanically and chemically broken down in the stomach. So the stomach has several functions. First of all, it stores food. The stomach can stretch to fit up to two liters of food. That's a lot. The stomach also disinfects your food. So if you eat something with bacteria on it, your mouth helps to, hurt, to break down the bacteria and kill it, but so does your stomach. The way the stomach does it is because it has an extremely low pH, and a low pH means that it's very, very acidic. So it has a pH of about 2. Chemical digestion occurs, we have an enzyme in our stomach called pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme that breaks down proteins, which might sound a little bit weird, because our stomach is a muscle, and muscles are made out of what? Yeah, they're made out of proteins. So what stops it from breaking down the walls of our stomachs and eating a hole through our body? Mucus is actually secreted by stomach cells, and that helps to protect the lining of the stomach and prevent ourselves from being eaten by acid from the inside out. So we've started in our mouth, where we break up the food. Starch is digested there by the enzyme amylase. The mouth also helps to kill germs, and it moistens our food to make it easier to swallow. We've also talked about the stomach. The stomach helps to kill any type of bacteria or germs that have entered with our food whenever we've ingested it. The stomach digests proteins with an enzyme called pepsin, and it also stores our food temporarily. Our stomach has two different sphincters that help keep food into it and prevent it from going up, and it also has a sphincter that prevents food from going straight through it until the food has been properly digested in the stomach and is ready to move into the small intestine. Our stomach secretes gastric juices. And again, like I was saying, the stomach is very acidic. It has a pH between 1.5 to 2.5.
on the pH scale, the strongest acid is a 1. So pepsin, the enzyme that breaks down large proteins into amino acids, is found there. And then food is further broken down into a thin liquid called chyme. So kind of like if I put that Happy Meal in the blender when we do the McMush Lab, I blend it all up. That's what it looks like in your stomach. And that's called chyme. Kind of nasty. So you guys have probably heard the term heartburn. And you yourselves may have experienced this whenever you've eaten your Flaming Hot Cheetos. So taking the heart out of heartburn. The esophagus actually has a ring of muscles at the top and at the bottom. If the bottom ring of, mu of muscles doesn't keep that lower part of the esophagus tightly closed between times whenever you swallow, the acid from your stomach can actually come back up through the esophagus and it starts to burn. That's that burning sensation you feel and people call that heartburn even though it really doesn't have anything to do with your heart. The pain you feel might feel like it's in the area of the heart, but it's actually coming from your esophagus. So it would make more sense to actually call it esophagus burn. Just food for thought. So this concludes part one of our digestive lecture when we talked about ingestion of food through our mouth and we stopped at the stomach. Stay tuned for part two when we find out what happens to that food when it leaves the stomach and eventually exits our body through the anus. See you guys next time.